everyone, I'm in Da Nang right now and I'm here with Alex from Ninja Teacher. He has been living here for six years total, but he lives in Da Nang for two years, right? And he has helped a lot of people, like hundreds of people, start teaching English here in Vietnam. So thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day here in Da Nang and I'm excited to film today with you. Yeah, so in today's video, we're gonna have a little sneak peek about his life here in Da Nang. But first, let's get some food. So where are we going next? Yeah, we're going to go to Mi Quang restaurants to get a central Vietnamese dish and it's a special version with fish in it. Okay, let's go then. I can't wait. Let's go. Okay, so Alex and I are here at the Mi Quang Dung. This dish is a must-try dish when you come to the central part of Vietnam and we're in Quang Nam province right now. In my bowl, I have beef, chicken and with the fish and Mi Quang is made of flat rice noodles and it's really, really good. This one looks like a curry one. I usually try the soup that is like orange a little bit and I'm very excited to try this. It looks different than the Mi Quang that I usually have. Yeah, I know it's got turmeric as well, so oh. that's probably why the color is a bit like that. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's a central Vietnam thing, but mm. yeah. Okay, are you a fan of spicy food? I like spicy and I especially like the sweet chili jam here, which is a little bit spicy but also sweet. That stuff there. This one? So good, oh, yeah. And okay. That's probably my favorite thing in the central Vietnam, the food here. I just put that on everything, you know. You can that's put it on the, awesome. the chicken rice, <clears throat> the kum ga, you can put it on in Mi Quang and all of that, it's delicious. All right, let's get yeah, eating let's before the food's like super cold. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me try the chili in here that you said is really good, right? Yeah, this chili is so good. And then they have the veggie here. In the central and the southern part of Vietnam, they serve a lot of veggie. Mm. Yeah, compared to like the northern part, they don't serve as much veggie when you eat noodles. Yeah, that's actually, I haven't thought about that, but I think you're, tr you're right when you say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All yeah. right. So this is like the chili with the fish sauce, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you're the local here now, so I'm just going to follow you, <laughs> you know? Mm. Wow. I can smell the turmeric in there. Right. So good. Yeah, I haven't actually tried the one with fish before, so it's be interesting to try. Let's give it a go. I want it a little bit more spicy. Mm. Mm. How is it? It's good. Yeah. Um, it tastes like the regular mi guang, but just fish, obviously, instead of the chicken or beef or pork. Right. Yeah. So the thing with Vietnamese food is that. The difference between Vietnamese food and American food is that they still serve chicken with bones. Yeah, in the noodles or in the food. So sometimes like you have to be very careful when you eat chicken or like fish even. Yeah. But in here they kind of like um, get the bone out of fish. So it's, it's really good. But with the chicken, there's still like broken bones. So just be careful when you eat it. Yeah, even with the fish, I didn't notice it with this dish, but sometimes you'll find like one or two little bones. So you gotta be careful. Yep, that's right. So like, what's the best thing here in Da Nang? What do you like the most? I would say probably nature in Da Nang because you have the beach right here and you've got the mountains and Sontra and you can drive maybe 30 minutes to get to waterfalls and it's just a very laid back lifestyle in Da Nang so you've got the city as well so everything you need in the city good right. food good cafes and then the beach and nature oh wow it's everything here everything it's good here in Da Nang oh my god it is so loud yeah that's the thing in Vietnam it's very hard to find a quiet place to talk and to eat so when yeah. I was in Vietnam, I kind of get used to it, but because I was um, abroad for like seven years, coming back with a kind of like new land, I start to notice it. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's just very hard to get used to it right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it still happens here in Da Nang as well, uh, but it is a little bit less bad here, except for all the resorts that they're oh, building, because yeah. that's kind of slowed down lately in the last mm -hmm. year or two, but. Uh, there were just resorts being built non-stop, you know? Oh. But a little bit less uh, noise and uh, construction happening in Da Nang than I found in Saigon. Absolutely. What are the things that you're trying to get used to in Vietnam? Yeah, well I think this is a good example of 
what we're talking about is there's often a lot of construction and noise in Da Nang a little bit less so I'd say than maybe Saigon and Hanoi. I would say also just comparing Saigon to Da Nang I think that uh, Da Nang's more laid back but not quite as exciting as Saigon or Hanoi not as much stuff to do you can have a really laid back and relaxed lifestyle here which is nice but I do miss the you know, the nightlife and the cafes and the restaurants and stuff because there's so many in the big cities and here uh, you get, yeah, it's not quite as exciting here. Mm, okay, got it. Yeah. yeah, it's getting a little bit loud in here and we just finished our food. So right now, Alex and I will head to the coffee shop and then I'll ask him more questions about his life here in Da Nang and uh, his job here as well. All right, let's go. Let's go. Enjoying the view is so beautiful. Okay, what is your normal day looks like here, teaching English as well as living in Da Nang? Yeah, so on an average day, I try and do some work in the morning and we're running our online TEFL training course so I can do it remotely from Da Nang. So I often work at cafes and then I will come out often in the afternoons to the beach and take some time off, play volleyball, surf, uh, enjoy the beach and then maybe travel a little bit outside to Sontra on weekends, do some trips to waterfalls and uh, explore around here, make YouTube videos as well. Wow, it's like very relaxing and I feel like I'm here and I feel like I just want to stay here forever. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so nice, the weather, the food and the people uh, themselves, they are very friendly and very nice. Can you share with me what the English teaching job market looks like in Vietnam? Yeah, so teaching jobs, uh, you can get one as a first-time teacher. You just need a bachelor's degree and a TEFL certificate. Uh, often they want people to be from native English-speaking countries. But as a first-time teacher, you can make about $1,200 to $2,000 per month. And as you know, I know you just made a cost of living video. You can yeah. live really well on under $1,000 per month. So it's a good salary for English teachers. And it's not so expensive to live in Vietnam, so you can save money and uh, you know, live a pretty good lifestyle and the working hours aren't too bad. You can teach maybe about 20 hours per week uh, on average, 15 to 25 maybe. And uh, yeah, so it's quite a good opportunity for a lot of people. That's awesome. So if people want to move here and get um, an English teaching job, what do they need to do? Yeah, so the first thing is to get a TEFL certification because that teaches you how to be a teacher because just because you can speak English doesn't mean you know how to teach it and schools require you to have that and the government requires you to have that to get a work permit as well. So getting a TEFL certification and obviously as you know things are not open with the borders yet but I'm sure you'll make a video when they are as well as me but uh, when they are open, then typically you come to Vietnam and you do in-person interviews with schools and then you get the job and then you process all the work permits and things like that. That's awesome. Um, so your life here, you've been living here for six years in Vietnam, but two years totally in Da Nang, right? Yeah. Yeah, so why Da Nang? Or let's put it first, like why Vietnam? And then after that, why Da Nang? Yeah, so I found myself in Vietnam after teaching for a year in South Korea and then I came to Vietnam and I just loved it. I lived in Hanoi for a year, then Saigon for four years and then since then I came to Da Nang. So just Vietnam in general, the food, the people, travel, the culture, uh, everything. You know, I've, like you, I make a lot of videos about living in Vietnam and I've shared a lot of it so you can just watch some of my videos just to see why Vietnam is so great. Yeah, so make sure you follow Alex um, and his YouTube channel and his Instagram so you can get the latest updates about the TAFL uh, and how to get an English teaching job here in Vietnam as well as the life here as an expat uh, in his channel as well. What's your teaching experience here compared to other countries that you, you've been to? Because I know you've been to Korea, you've been to so many other countries to teach English. So what's the difference here among those countries? Yeah, so I spent a year teaching English in South Korea and I would say in most Asian countries the kids are quite polite and well behaved for the most part. You know, it's kids everywhere are, are kids, right? But I think compared to the Western world, in Asia students really try hard to learn and do well. As well as 
Vietnam, I find the students really friendly and energetic and uh, you know engaged. It depends on the age group, depends on a lot right. of factors. But um, yeah, I really liked teaching English when I was doing that full time here. So yeah. Yeah, especially the second and the third graders. You know, mm -hmm. they would not sit still, <laughs> and you need to be very, very patient with them. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one thing about teaching English too. Is it's quite interactive and engaging. It's not mm -hmm. like when you think of school back home mm -hmm. because you're teaching a language you're not just teaching like classroom teaching so lots of games and activities and you have to have quite a lot of energy uh, and it is quite uh, engaging kind of teaching style. So I know a lot of my audience from my channel wanted to travel and move to Vietnam so any advice or any suggestions before they come? Yeah I think Vietnam is a great place to live and work and I've had an amazing time. It totally changed my life living abroad in Vietnam. So, you know, we've helped a lot of people do it too. And I don't think anyone ever regrets it. You know, maybe they'll just do it for one year, maybe two years, maybe they'll stay for a long time. But I don't think anyone regrets doing at least a year of teaching English abroad or living abroad. So I'd highly re recommend it, you know? Yeah, thank you so much, Alex, for showing me beautiful Da Nang. And guys, Alex made a video about uh, my story and the places that we went to in Da Nang as well. So make sure you check out his video that will be coming very soon. And if you want to know how to get a uh, TAFL certificate or how to get an English job here in Vietnam, I'll leave the link below in the description box so you can check it out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and Alex's channel to know more about the life in Vietnam. And do you have anything else to say to the audience? Yeah, just I think what Van is doing is great. So definitely watch Van's videos. She's really great. It's showing Vietnam life and culture. So yeah, it was nice to collaborate with you today. Okay, thank you so much for being here. And thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Let's go then. I can't wait. Let's go. <laughs> you went that way, I was like that. <laughs> yeah, so the thing with Vietnamese food, <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I think... Uh... <laughs> there you go. <laughs>